Brexit, 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 and other lifeboat conversations. I'm going to have a chiming in on this Brexit thing and bring it back into reality. I'm going to try to bring it back in reality, but I think I'm going to choose uh, a hat for Brexit. I think I'll choose this hat for Brexit. I'm going to start off my conversation, the lifeboat conversation on Brexit. And I'm wearing the appropriate hat, uh, British, the fool, Shakespeare's fool is alive and well. And the Brexit decision, I, I'm actually quite surprised. I have to say, because, and, and I want to footnote uh, or, or sort of uh, just give you a little uh, indication of where I'm going with this, and that is our, our greatest, our greatest lifeboat discussion is Fukushima and Fukushima ramping, ramping it up every day as this is not being addressed, the fact, but I'm going to get there and I'm going to cover the insignificant topics like Brexit and all the other political insignificant topics, not to say that people aren't suffering and hurt by the actions and the consequences, but the Brexit, the Brexit, I have other hats I'll put on, but the Brexit is first. And I, here's my thought, my opinion, is that this is all by design again. The idea that the people that run the joint, the owners, as George Carlin has called them so beautifully, would just kiss off on something that's really important to them. I feel that this the Fukushima problem is ratcheting up to the point where the diversions now are going to enter the conversation into the lifeboat. We're in the lifeboat. We're having conversations in the lifeboat. And these, these topics are going to continue to come up and they're actually quite irrelevant in the big scheme of things because I believe the owners, the people that run the joint have kissed off on everything already. And whatever their fantasy life is, you know, they need to they need they need to wear this or well, the fool could well in Shakespeare, the fool was enlightened, if you remember in Lear, the fool was had the insight. The the fool could even insult the king, had the privilege of insulting the king. And the artists no longer are the fools able to insult the king, they just are producing vulgarities. The idiosyncrasies, as I've called them, the meaningless, irrelevant work that's being produced that doesn't deal with the substance of our being, what is most important to us. And what's most important is survival. And what allows us to survive is, number one, take care of our children, protect the vulnerable, and take care of our children. This is number one, the a priori. And the missing children, every day, two million children go missing every year. In, in the Western world, in the U.S., I think, in the U.S. Oh, where did they go? Yes, I've talked about this, but the Brexit topic now is interesting to me because it indicates that the Fukushima issue is ratcheting up in the minds of people, generally. When this hits the frontal lobe, you don't need a fool to tell you anything anymore, like the fools that are out there trying to divert our attention away from what the most important topic is, and it is the destruction of all life on this planet through nuclear, the nuclear destruction run by a syndicate, run by a syndicate that has, that has no regard whatsoever for the meaning behind existence and the mystery that I'm so attached to. That's why I make the paintings, I make my Pacific paintings. I'm making art because I feel my connection to something that is much greater than myself or anyone else out there or even collectively, there is something that we're ignoring. And the Brexit issue, I think, is a foregone conclusion. Could have gone either way, I suppose, but the fact it wasn't rigged, it's usually 51-49. Well, this one was 52-48. I guess it makes it look like it's democratic, I suppose. I don't know what that means. But the fact is that this has already been built in to the entire scenario that we're facing which is the destruction, which is the destruction coming out of the nuclear criminal syndicate and primarily out of Fukushima. And maybe I should change a hat. And this, of course, is the archetypal hat of people for, uh, like me, the tinfoil hatters who are always crying wolf 
And you don't have to far, you don't have to look far to see the destruction and to be diverted away from the topic that's really important to us, that's really important to every life form on this planet, but bring up the Brexit and the exit and the Dexit and the Noxit and the Noxit fumes out of this discussion. It's just, it's for me, for me, it's irrelevant. It has no relevance to you or me because we're under threat from a much greater, from a much greater adversary, an invisible adversary. Anyway, what's my next hat? Yeah, well, I like uh, this hat because it identifies me with a, an extended family with my nuclear logo, the dreaded red. And what I'm thinking is we're having lifeboat conversations and where they're going, where are they leading us, these conversations that we're having every day, avoiding the most important topic. Two of the most important topics are children and the environmental degradation and destruction. And we're not having that collective conversation, but we're having a conversation about, oh my God, somebody wants to leave uh, a union and it becomes the issue of financial collapse. Well, it's probably the beginning of the event of some sort of, uh, it's been building up in the system. You can hear this, you can hear this, you can hear this on uh, uh, every, every half decent YouTuber and alternate media is aware of the fact that there is something brewing that's untoward in terms of the general population not realizing what's really behind the troubles we're facing. And there are so few people that have actually identified this so, so succinctly with an understanding. And one of them is Dana Darnford. He's struggling because he's been hammered. He's been hammered by the PR types that come out and disparage people of conscience. What I've always said, the primary ability to do the right thing. We all have this within us. I'm convinced we have this within us. And I repeat myself. But it's in the context now. It's in the context of being sidelined from what it is we're, we're not supposed to see. We're being removed from the topic we're supposed to talk about with this Brexit thing. And it's, I, I think it was built in. And the owners have already understood all this. It's not an issue. It's not important. What is important to them, though, I, I can feel this ratcheting up, that there is a consequence of having ignored three full core meltdowns at Fukushima for over five years. There are consequences unfolding every day from the invisible enemy to all life on this planet. So I thought I just, uh, I've not disappeared. I've been in a, a volatile period myself in terms of my work and my art. I've had uh, interactions with collectors and uh, potential clients and uh, agents, and I'm no longer I'm no longer interested in any of their uh, assistance because we all are supposed to make compromises. And there is one thing I cannot compromise, and that is when we have our connection to that mystery, when we compromise against that mystery, everything gets screwed up. Everything gets screwed up. And I, I didn't follow my, follow my instincts. I got involved with something that fortunately I called an end to before it got too far down the road with all the promises and the, uh, uh, all, the, all the sort of rolling out the carpet, how magnificent and how wealthy and famous and all that kind of bullshit, which doesn't matter. What matters is the moment and how we conduct ourselves with each other on behalf of the people that are vulnerable and I will do whatever I can. So I've, I've removed myself from that volatile situation. I feel better about it. Uh, I'm back to square one in terms of promoting my work. And uh, it all sort of fits in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm recalling a, a quote by Picasso. And I, I'm not a great fan of Picasso, the person. I think he had an epiphany early 1900 along with a few other artists. Uh, there was quite a healthy uh, creative uh, state among the human population in many ways in the early 1900s considering people like Duchamp and Dada, the Dada movement, 
uh, the surrealist movement, the constructivist movement, the cubists. And Picasso once said that to a, uh, don't know who it was to, uh, probably a critic, most likely an art critic. And art critics aren't too interested in artists' opinions and ideas. And artists, quite rightfully, can take the high ground and just let them sort it all out. I'm not interested in explaining anything about what I'm doing. And Picasso said, uh, he, he put sort of like, again, he leveled the field on this quote. I like this. He said that when uh, he was confronted by a critic, he said, when I look at an art work, a painting, a sculpture, I'm not interested in any of your questions. I want the answer. And this, is the, and this is something that is totally misunderstood by people who think about process. You're not, I'm the person in the process as I make my paintings. I have a process. I'm involved in an unfolding of myself in a process. But when the paintings are done, when they're finished, I have presented a definitive position to you that my work will represent, not a question to you, but it's an answer. And the answer is something that you deal with the way I deal with it when I look at it. It inspires me. Oh, you know, if work has no relevance to, to our existence, there is no point in looking at it. And what it is that the work needs to reflect is the situation the times we're in. We live in the age of fission. We live in the age of fission, people. We're not in some information age or digital age. No, we, the age that will surpass all ages is the age of fission, and it will dwarf the digital age, and the information age, and the technology age, and the industrial age, and the iron age, and the bronze age, and the stone age, and I don't care what age you want to create in your mental capacities, we're in the age of fission. Nuclear fission will level this planet to its bare existence, to its rocks. That's all there is going to be left. If we don't kick in, and if we don't support the people that have the vision, that transmit this mission, this vision, in the, and have their mission as well, and transmit this vision in the most succinct and important way. And that's uh, my purpose, and that's why I've uh, done a video again today, and the Brexit thing is a sideline. People do not be fooled by this. Uh, there will be repercussions, undoubtedly. There will be repercussions. And uh, it's again, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those hangnails that we're going to deal with when uh, the uh, the legs are falling off. So, well, you saw my hats, my Brexit, my Brexit hat, my Brexit hat, and uh, uh, my tinfoil hat because uh, as a tinfoil hatter, I get attacked for saying something that is of relevance to you and me. You get attacked with the thumbs down when you're relevant. And I know the, the message that I communicate, the best way that I can out of my studio is relevant to you. I'm convinced of that because I know it's relevant to me. So act your conscience, do the right thing and support the people that are, that are working on all our behalf. Uh,